big contrast ahead, SpaceX is making impressive strides as it prepares for its next major launch, Ship 36, on Flight 10. Meanwhile, Blue Origin is encountering serious setbacks with its new Glenn hardware. And in another major update, Axiom Space has just announced a change in its CEO position. Let's dive into all the details on today's episode of Great SpaceX. We may still have to wait a few more weeks to finally see Flight 9 take off, but that doesn't mean everything has slowed down. In fact, SpaceX is pushing forward with strong preparations for the future. One major step forward is the work on Flight 10, which has recently made significant progress. This became clear when a row closure was announced signaling the move of S-36, the assigned ship for Flight 10, from the factory to the Massey test site. On the 26th of April, SpaceX opened the doors of Mega Bay 2, revealing S-36 standing proudly on its transport stand. By the end of the morning, S-36 had officially been moved out of the bay. Interestingly, at this stage, S-36 did not yet have its aft flaps installed. This likely means that, similar to Ship 35, the flaps will be attached later. Additionally, the heat shield appeared incomplete, with several unusual spots hinting at areas still under development or pending final adjustments. Later that day, S-36 was transported to the Massey test site. Without wasting any time, SpaceX kicked off its testing campaign early the next morning, on the 27th. The team began with a strong vent process, followed by vigorous fuel loading into both tanks of S-36. Based on the appearance of frost, it's clear that both tanks were completely filled to push the fuel tanks to their limits. After the fuel loading, the tanks were detanked, suggesting that the test went smoothly and was a success. Given that S-36's flight schedule is not under tight pressure, SpaceX is expected to conduct several more rounds of testing. They will likely experiment with different fuel levels to thoroughly detect and address any potential issues as well as to better understand the tank limits. These tests will help ensure the ship's reliability and readiness for flight. Once the testing phase at Massey is completed, S-36 will return to the production site for the next major milestone, engine installation. This steady movement forward shows just how much momentum SpaceX has built up for Flight 10. Back in March, they completed cryogenic testing with B-16, which is the super heavy booster assigned to Flight 10. B-16 is currently in Mega Bay 1, where it's undergoing engine installation. Once both the ship and booster have their engines installed, they will proceed through static fire tests and final checks, paving the way for stacking and launch preparations. Moreover, the proactive work on Flight 10 reflects the company's confidence in the success of Flight 9. SpaceX is determined to keep the launch cadence strong, and having Flight 10 hardware ready to go immediately after Flight 9 ensures there will be no slowdown in momentum. And it doesn't stop there. B-15, slated for Flight 11, is currently undergoing checks in Mega Bay 1, while B-17 has already completed its cryogenic tests. On the ship side, S-37 has finished stacking, and the first section of S-38 was spotted just as S-36 was leaving Mega Bay 2. Clearly, we are on the verge of a very busy and exciting period for Starship operations. However, the key to unlocking this future remains the success of Flight 9. Preparations for this pivotal mission continue with great care and precision. We will soon see S-35 arrive at Massey for its own static fire testing. Afterward, both S-35 and B-14 will be thoroughly checked, installed, and prepared for launch. If you're excited about SpaceX's relentless progress and future plans, show your support by commenting, keep on keeping on. Let's cheer on the incredible teams making history happen every day. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on SpaceX's amazing development journey. Your support is crucial as we aim for a big milestone, which is reaching 200k subscribers. Thank you so much for being a part of this exciting adventure. Let's now turn our attention to Blue Origin. With the debut of the new Glenn rocket earlier this year, it was clear they intended to compete aggressively with SpaceX. However, unexpectedly, they have just encountered a significant setback. Recently, images surfaced showing the interior of Blue Origin's factory with its doors open, and what was captured has raised serious concerns. A fuel tank inside the facility appeared to be severely deformed. This kind of deformation usually results either from a strong external impact or from pressure testing where internal forces exceed the tank's structural limits. Based on the appearance of the damage, it seems most likely that it occurred during a pressure test when the forces applied went far beyond what the material and design could withstand. At this time, Blue Origin, Bezos, and CEO Dave Limp have not issued any official statements regarding the situation. This leaves many questions unanswered. From the available images, it is not entirely clear whether the damaged tank is a flight tank 
intended for an actual mission, a simulation tank used for testing purposes, or some other form of prototype. Based on its size and positioning, I would guess that it is a flight-ready tank, most likely for the new booster stage given its significant length. Another important question is which mission this tank was intended for. Naturally, some speculate that it could belong to the new Glen 2 booster, especially since that particular booster has not yet been publicly seen. However, that seems a little less likely. Since Blue Origin has been targeting a launch as early as June, the new Glen 2 booster should already be completed or close to it. Therefore, it is more plausible and this damaged tank was intended for a later mission. Regardless of which specific mission the tank was intended for, this incident raises serious concerns about the reliability and quality control of New Glenn's hardware. The biggest worry is whether this damage represents an isolated failure or a broader mass production issue. If it's the latter, the consequences could be severe, affecting not just this tank, but potentially multiple flight-ready tanks already manufactured, including the critical ones intended for upcoming launches. This situation highlights the difficult road ahead for Blue Origin. The company has been notoriously slow to make progress over the years. Despite its massive resources, Blue Origin only launched its first orbital mission earlier this year. They have ambitious goals for rapid expansion, but this fuel tank issue could trigger major delays, if not outright cancellations, of some of their planned launches. And this isn't the first time hardware problems have surfaced at Blue Origin. Last year, reports emerged that the second stage of the new Glenn rocket had faced significant technical challenges during testing for the second and third flights. Although recent developments such as successful hot fire testing of the second stage have helped ease some concerns, these past issues underline a pattern of difficulties that could continue to haunt their programs. Currently, Blue Origin is preparing to roll out the new Glenn booster for integration testing and must still secure a launch license. While the target of launching new Glenn 2 in June remains theoretically possible, the reality is much more uncertain, especially now that there are new concerns about the integrity of their fuel tanks. Thorough reinspection and additional testing may be required, adding further strain to their already tight timeline. Looking at the broader space race, these setbacks put Blue Origin at a disadvantage. Despite originally setting their sights on competing directly with SpaceX, the gap between the two companies has only widened. SpaceX has established a dominant position in the launch industry, while Blue Origin is struggling to complete even a handful of missions. In fact, in terms of operational success, Blue Origin is now behind not just SpaceX, but also Rocket Lab, which has been steadily growing its capabilities and reputation. That is looking further ahead. For now, we must watch closely to see how Blue Origin responds. Will they be able to fix the fuel tank problem? Stay on track and successfully launch New Glenn 2, or will this setback cause another round of delays? Either way, the coming months will be crucial in shaping the future of Blue Origin and the New Glenn program. Now, let's move on to an important update regarding Axiom Space's leadership change. On the 25th, Axiom Space officially announced that Tej Paul Bhatia, the company's chief revenue officer since 2021, has been promoted to chief executive officer. Bhatia will now replace Cam Kafarian, the company's co-founder and interim CEO. To give some context, Gafarian had stepped in as interim CEO in August last year after the former CEO, Michael Sufredini, resigned for personal reasons following eight years of leadership. Although Gafarian is stepping down from the CEO role, he will continue to serve the company as executive chairman, ensuring that his experience and vision remain part of Axiom's leadership structure. In their official announcement, Axiom Space praised Batia's contributions over the past few years. As chief revenue officer, Batia played a critical role in securing over 1 billion US dollars in contracts and facilitating groundbreaking achievements, such as organizing the first ever government purchases of private astronaut missions to the International Space Station. The company stated, Tej has been a driving force as our chief revenue officer for the past four years, with accomplishments including securing over a billion US dollars in contracts and facilitating the industry's first first ever government purchases of private astronaut missions to the International Space Station. Cam Gafarian also expressed strong confidence in Batia's leadership, saying, Axiom Space was founded to expand the boundaries of what's possible in space, and Tej has been instrumental in turning that vision into a reality. 
His blend of entrepreneurial drive, global perspective, and deep commitment to our mission will ensure Axiom Space's leadership at the forefront of the rapidly growing commercial space market. Tashpal Bhatia himself shared his excitement about the new role. In a post on X, he wrote, It's my honor to serve as the next CEO of Axiom Space. I have been inspired by space exploration since childhood, and leading Axiom Space at this critical inflection point is a culmination of my experiences and dreams. We are accelerating our investment in next generation stations, suits, missions, and space platforms. We're actively seeking passionate visionary engineers, technologists, and entrepreneurs who want to help build humanity's future home in space. I am proud to lead Team Axiom. He also reiterated his enthusiasm in the official company statement, I've been inspired by space exploration since childhood, and leading Axiom Space at this critical inflection point in human spaceflight is the realization of a lifelong ambition. Having a permanent CEO will be a major advantage for Axiom Space. It brings much needed stability at a time when the company is expanding into several critical areas of the space industry. Axiom Space is a key contractor for NASA, developing next-generation spacesuits for the Artemis Moon Program, a project that has already shown promising progress. Beyond that, Axiom is also a major player in NASA's commercial space station program. In preparation for building their own orbital outpost, Axiom continues to conduct private missions to the ISS using SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft. Their fourth mission is scheduled to launch this May. Additionally, the company recently announced plans to develop an orbital data center, a project that will eventually support the operation of their future space station. However, Batsia's challenges are not limited to growing the company's business. He will also have to address internal issues. Axiom is currently facing financial pressures due to the large operational costs associated with managing multiple projects at once. Moreover, the company had previously engaged in massive hiring efforts, and the resulting high salary expenses are now straining its finances. Compounding the problem, Axiom has recently seen the departure of many experienced employees, creating gaps that must be filled to maintain momentum. It will be interesting to watch how Tej Paul Batia navigates these challenges, and leads Axiom Space into its next chapter. His leadership comes at a pivotal moment, and his actions will play a crucial role in shaping the company's future in the competitive and fast-evolving commercial space industry. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly in the latest details of SpaceX's progress. Thank you so much for tuning in, and remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.